Let's go to Brooke in Washington, D.C. What's up, Brooke? Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you for calling. What's up? Um, I'm asking for some advice on how to move on from a future that I had planned with an ex-fiance um, and the feeling of betrayal and abandonment I have when I never really got any closure from him. Oof. I'm sorry. It's okay. Did he up and flip the switch on you and take off? Um, well, kind of. He was actually already away because he was on military orders. Mm -hmm. um, so he just called me and told me all this that he, while he was gone, he was away for like two months. Mm -hmm. And in the, during that time, he called me and said that um, he no longer wanted children, um, which wasn't a huge deal for me. Um, but he also said that he doesn't believe in God anymore and um, considers himself agnostic now. Mm -hmm. And that was a bigger deal to me because um, my faith is important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just kind of came out of the blue. I was blindsided. Um, he left here in January and told me all this beginning of March, and I haven't seen him since. When he called you, did he end the relationship? Um, no. Or he's like, hey, I still want to get married. I love you. Just we're not having kids, and I don't believe in God right now. Yeah, that was kind of how it was. He, um, and so he, did, like, did you break up with him? Is that why he's the ex-fiance now? <laughs> um, I don't know. I say he broke up with me. He would say he that I broke up with him, I think. Um, basically, I didn't want us to make like a rash decision, rash decision over the phone. Um, I asked him if he would like go to counseling with me um, when he got back. And, but for whatever reason, like over the phone conversations and texting when we weren't together, just one thing kind of led to another. And um, we, like, I kind of told him I wanted to postpone the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and because I didn't think there was any way we could like work through that um, and still get married. We were supposed to get married in July. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I said. He took that as like, I was breaking up with him because I told him I would like, he had some furniture at his apartment that was mine. Mm -hmm. And I told him like, Hey, I'll like get my furniture out until we figure this out. Because I was moving. I was like, I need to move to another apartment. And, um, take my stuff, even though I didn't live with him at the time. So, hey, Brooke, I just, just met you <laughs> like two minutes ago. And it sounds like yeah. you broke up with him. And, and, yeah. and, and, <laughs> you might regret it. You might know it was the right thing for you and be devastated by it. But all healing starts with ownership of what we do or what was done to us. Yeah, and I guess like, yeah, I did. I kind of was the one that ended it um, because I didn't see how we could like make it work at the time before we even went to counseling or anything. Yeah. And, and um, Hey, you don't have, you don't have to explain your boundaries to me. They're your yeah. boundaries. Um, one of your boundaries for being married to somebody was I want to be a mom. One of your boundaries for being married to somebody is um, I want faith to be a central part of my life and our relationship. And somebody you were with who had previously committed to those things changed. Yeah. And so they banged their head up. They put, he put his boundaries out. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you found yourselves in two neighboring homes that were completely walled off from one another. Yeah. Right. And so what we have to ask ourselves about our boundaries is, are these things fixed for me or are, um, this is going to sound crazy. Uh, I used to be obsessed. I used to think the most attractive thing in the world, not the most, but one of the most, top 10, was uh, left-handed, girls who write left-handed. I don't know why. I just have a thing. And I love girls who have lots of tattoos. It's just a thing. Always have since I was a kid. I married a teacher, like an elementary school teacher, a right-handed elementary school teacher. No tattoos, right? Right. And in fact, when my friends first met her, they were like, are you serious? Like, what happened to you? And I was like, no, she's really great. And they're like, I know she's great, but it's not what we had in our head that you would bring home. And we had a lot of jokes that we can't use now because you brought home like a teacher, right? And so I tell you that to tell you, 
Like I had a boundary. My wife's going to be like this. And then I met the woman who is my wife. And that I had to look at my boundaries that I had drawn that were 19 years old. For, they were idiotic. And I had to change them because they were dumb. And then there's other boundaries that had she said, hey, I don't um, – not only do I not share your faith system, but I don't ever want it mentioned in my house. Um, our kids, if we ever have kids, are not going to have any sort of connection to this. Or you can go do that on your own, but we're not doing that. That would have been a big deal for me. Yeah. Um, and I'll also tell you, I've been through years of my marriage where I've been agnostic. I think the whole thing's just stupid. The whole faith thing's just dumb. The whole thing's ridiculous. And I've had cycles of being really high up on it all and real low up on it all. And now I've settled into a place where I feel really great for like the last five to 10 years um, in what I believe and how I believe it. And it's very, very different than some of my coworkers. It's, it's different than my wife. But we have, a com- we have a common respect for one another. Does that make sense? And so I don't necessarily yeah. think that a guy who's on deployment who makes a phone call is suddenly cast himself into stone. It mm-hmm. tells me that there's something deeper in this relationship. Yeah. And my guess is you you could pull something apart that things weren't okay when he left at some shape, form, or fashion. Is that true? Or tell me I'm out to lunch. You can say no. It was perfect until he left. Um, I mean, I thought it was. I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he went out there, he just kind of stopped um, communicating with me like he normally would, and. So like, I kind of did push the issue. I was like, what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Um, and he told me like, he, he didn't want to tell me because if I, if he did, he knew I would break up with him. Uh, And so like, I kind of, eventually he did obviously. Um, and my guess is there's more to that story. Yeah. (laughs) My guess is there's Um, more that either he told you. Or that he hasn't told you, but you kind of know. That's my guess. Maybe again, he could be sitting here and be like, "No, dude, it was just those two things." Um, I mean, I I didn't really know. I knew he wasn't like as strong in his faith as I was. Mm-hmm. But um, before he left, he was like, "Oh, I can't wait to like when we get back, we'll like look for a church together." Because we both had moved to a new state. Sure. Um, he's like, "We'll look for a church together. We'll find a place um, that we both like and." So is he, like, is he on deployment? No. <laughs> is he on deployment now? Or is he just in another city? No, he was just in another city for just two months. So is he back home now? Yes. Okay. Have y'all gone out? Just... No, he will not see me. <laughs> oh, he won't talk to you anymore. Okay. Is he heartbroken or is he done? Um, he, we talked for a little while, mm-hmm. um, just like on the phone and texting. Um, but he says that he can't do that anymore because it's just harder on him. Sure. Like, he never wanted to meet up with me um, because he said he knew that if he saw me, he would just want to like tell me basically what I wanted to hear mm-hmm. and say he would go to church with me and believe in God for me and all these mm-hmm. things. And he's like, and that's not fair to you. Um, and so I don't think he's really, he wasn't really done. He was just like, He's tra- it sounds, you know what it sounds like? He could take it. In, well, it sounds, op- no, it's, it sounds like in a sideways way, however different I would have done it, it sounds like he was trying to honor you. Yeah. And I mean, that's what he said the whole time. He's like, this is me I, telling you all this was the most selfless thing I could do because I didn't want you to marry me and then resent me. There you go. And, and again, if, I, if he was sitting here, I'd be like, dude, I would have done this a different way. But he didn't call me and ask me. And so I... Yeah. To get back to your original question, you have a picture in your head of July and you have a picture of your head of August and September and you have a picture of your head of little knuckleheads running around and him coming home in his uniform and then meeting him at the door and you have pictures in your head of him coming home, surprising you and snatching you away from some grody commodi romantic weekend away. You've got pictures in your head of all that stuff. And so when you grieve the loss of somebody, whether they pass away, whether they break up with you, whether they leave you, you have to deal with all of these pictures 
You had plans with this dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's something you can't skip over. You can't run around it. There's no hacks. You've got to grieve it. Even to the point where you see something funny and you immediately pick up your phone to text the meme to him. Mm-hmm. Because that's the next place, right? Or when the, someone knocks on the door, you instantly, your body knows he's on the other end of that door, even though he's not. Right? Yeah, and I I felt like I have grieved it. <laughs> I don't know. I felt like I um, went through the whole grieving process, and then I'm like, it just cycles back. Like, I felt better for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then just something small will remind me of him, and I'm, like, back at the beginning. That's right. And, like, part of me was, like, I really miss him, and a lot of me still just wants to be with him and just be like, it's okay. I can accept that you don't believe what I believe and we can make it work. Um, but he didn't really seem willing to do that either. Like, he's just like, no, that's not fair to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that, you that honestly is what makes me think there's bigger things to talk about here. Um, and that's, I mean, there is, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, right. I, I'm, I'm confident there's more to this story. Um, and so let me say this. Just because you miss him doesn't mean that being separated is the, not the right thing. Yeah. Okay. And just because you hurt really, really bad and now you're questioning your own boundaries doesn't mean that you weren't right. And both people in a situation like this, as heartbreaking as it is, both of you can be right and end up apart. You know what I mean? And ho- yeah. Hollywood told us that's not how that's supposed to go. You know? And so you mentioned something important that that I want to touch on. I think of the grief process as a spiral and it loops back. And when it loops back and I miss him, I'm not going to grab a drink. I'm not going to immediately turn on Netflix or pick up my phone to start scrolling something. I'm going to sit for five minutes. Okay. I'm just going to sit. I miss that dude. Okay. (sighs) This hurts. I miss him. Yeah. And I feel like I've really, I don't know. I also feel like I hurt him because, I mean, he has dealt with issues of abandonment before mm-hmm. and he said he felt like I abandoned him. Um, and so you have some guilt there. You have some guilt yeah, there. Yeah. And right? then I, he also said, like, through this whole process, um, he's just been pushed further away from, um, what his faith, what he had in his, or what his faith was. And, and you got to be careful because now he's projecting himself onto you. He's yeah. making choices about those things now, right? Yeah. He's choosing to not see you and to not have closure. He's choosing to, um, to, he chose to dump a lot on you on the phone and he chose not to receive your return dump back on the phone. Right? So, there's a comes a point when if he wants to walk away from his faith even faster, great. He's choosing that. That's not something you made him do. Right. If he chooses to not talk to you because talking to you hurts so bad, that's hard to hear. And it's important to go. <sighs> and I said, it's a spiral. So what happens, what I've seen happen over and over with folks is it loops back. And every time it loops back, if I'll sit in it for a second, for five minutes, mm-hmm. for 10 minutes. The next time it loops back, it's still there, but it hurts a little bit less. And then it hurts a little bit less. Where I see most people get hung up is they don't want to let go. Yeah. Is, That's what I'm having trouble doing. And that means go. you haven't grieved it yet, <laughs> right? You've hurt. <laughs> You've been in pain. But grieving is the process of acknowledging reality. This is the way this is. And then asking yourself that scary, terrifying question, what do I do next? Right? And you've been connected to a guy that's probably a pretty good guy. And he's definitely strong. He's got all the good character, all the stuff. But it's been a, it's it's been an anchor point for you. And now it's a matter of what's next. I wish there was an easy way. I wish I was like a biohack. All that's just nonsense. There's one way through it. Um, one other thing I'll recommend to you, Brooke, is you have to, have to, 
have to have other people with you while you're grieving. Grief demands a witness, as the great David Kessler says. You got to have other people with you. So you got to have girlfriends that you hang out with, that you're honest with, that you say, hey, I'm just not doing okay today, that you text. Today's a low day. Um, I miss him. Or today's a great day. Let's go out. Let's go do something fun, right? Or I don't feel like going out, but I'm going to go anyway because I'm going to end up having a good time with these two or three or five or six girlfriends, or whatever. But make sure you've got friends that you're connecting with. Stay on the line. Jenna's going to send you a copy of. Um, my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. And it will walk you through the grieving process. There's a whole chapter on grief. And what do I do next? I also think it's in this situation. I know there's more to this story. And man, I'd love to unpack it if we had time. I think it's worth saying, hey, when you're ready, breakfast is on me. And I'll meet you at any IHOP or Denny's in the area. We'll meet at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. It's on me when you're ready. I'd love to talk. And you can send that in a handwritten letter, not a text message, a handwritten letter to say, hey, I'd love to talk with you. I miss you. And um, I know you're hurting, but one day when you're ready, I'll be ready too. <sighs> so sorry. I wish I had some big fancy dust I could sprinkle over this one, but this one's going to hurt for a while. I'm proud of you for sticking to your boundaries. I'm proud of him for being honest with you. I'm proud of everybody in this situation. And yuck, it still hurts at the end. 